Enemies in some form are vital for almost every video game. Some sort of obstacle is going to halt the player's progress until they work out a way around it. In many genres, this means fighting and defeating enemies using whatever mechanics are offered. In some games, this could also mean befriending them, maybe using some sort of dialogue system, or maybe just solving a puzzle they give you. You could arguably categorize any challenge in a game as an enemy. The other contestants in a racing game, the falling blocks in Tetris, or even simple pools of lava. But let's not worry about exact definitions. When you think of an enemy in a game, I'll bet you picture a waddling turtle or a screaming orc trying to beat up the player. These are the types of enemies you likely want to design for your own game, whether you're making a 2D platformer, a 3D survival shooter, or an overhead tactics game. But just keep in mind that these enemies are not so fundamentally different from the most basic obstacles in a game. When watered down, you're just putting something in front of your player to deal with. Having a solution of just jumping is extremely basic though, so let's see how we can push the complexity beyond lava pools. The core of enemy design is figuring out two things. How will the enemy try to kill or defeat the player, and how will the enemy let the player defeat them? The first part is obvious, but the second may be less so. But think about it, you want the player to succeed, right? You don't want to make an unbeatable enemy. I mean, that would be easy. We have access to the code after all. We could just kill the player whenever our monster looks at them. Okay, I guess that makes sense if you're making a stealth game, but my point is that it has to be feasible for the player to win, however you want to exactly define victory be it winning a fight or merely escaping and surviving. The point is, we want to design a situation where the player could fail so that it'll feel like a rewarding achievement when they do actually succeed. Let's consider this with one of the most bare-bones enemies imaginable, a Goomba. With its AI, it simply walks around and will deal damage if the player touches them. They aren't fast or really very threatening at all, but they check all the boxes, they have the capability to defeat the player, and they have a way to be defeated the player can just jump on top of them and squash them. Or even jump over them, completely ignoring them as they complete the level. A variety of solutions to a simple challenge. Very simple, but that's the concept. Offer a threat and offer an opportunity to succeed. The window available to defeat a Goomba is almost completely open. The only limit of when the player can beat them is by their own timing and aiming of their jump. Now without touching the Goomba's AI at all, we could make things a lot more complicated by changing the terrain of the world, or by sending out many Goombas at once. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's stay focused on one individual enemy. To make the challenge greater, we need to close the opportunity window a bit. We need to make the criteria for defeating the enemy more difficult to reach. But remember, it is vital that the window stays open. There has to be a way for the player to win. Maybe instead of jumping on top, we make it so that the enemy can only be attacked from the side with a shell. Oh yeah, that's a spiny. Okay, well, how about instead of walking, we make our enemy fly? That'll be much more difficult to land on top of. Oh, that's that's a paratroopa. Hmm. Alright, I got it. What if the enemy doesn't really move anymore, but they start launching projectiles at the player? Oh, that's... yep, that's a hammer, bro. Okay. As should be clear, incrementing difficulty and creating a more interesting enemy is largely just a matter of closing the window of opportunity. Just make the player have to strategize a little bit more than before. Many games fall into the trap of just increasing health to increase difficulty. Now the health bar is a tool to use, but that shouldn't be your only change to a basic starting enemy. If you double the health, then you double the time it takes for the player to win. You didn't change the window at all, so to speak. You just plopped another window in front of it. You're better off just placing a second enemy next to the first. That can be a bit more interesting of situation at least. Now I'm not going to suggest that you never increase health pools. Honestly, taking two hits to kill is still probably perfectly reasonable. However, be sure that you have a reason for it. Are you giving the player more damage over time? Do you want the player to avoid these enemies altogether? Does the enemy have so many unique attacks that you want to ensure that it stays alive long enough to show off all of them? Please just have a reason for increasing the health. Put some thought into it. There are so many more creative ways to increase the difficulty than just increasing one number. Speaking of difficulty, let's talk about some stupidly difficult enemies following the game's industry jump into 3D. Dark Souls. Well, actually Elden Ring, because that's the one I have more experience with. Now here, I'm sure many of you would argue that the enemy AI has gone off the rails. It's far too difficult. The window of victory has been slammed shut and covered in concrete. But human beings have managed to beat and enjoy that game. So let's consider the limits of AI difficulty, where serious achievement can be felt against immense odds. The basic idea I've been talking about still stands. The enemies try to kill the player, and sometimes they let the player kill them. It is often hard to find the timing, but every enemy offers a moment in their animations where they can be attacked. Now, this can vary wildly depending on the type of weapon the player is using. 
If they're using magic, then they can attack whenever they want, as long as they're far away enough. But if they're using melee, then they need to attack when the enemy is stuck in a recovering or staggering animation. Or simply when the player can complete their own attack animation and dodge the enemy's response in time. The enemy AI in Elden Ring is often unpredictable. Even early on, simple enemies have a lot of options and will surprise you. It's like the window of opportunity is warping in size while also slamming open and shut. The key to all of this is that a vulnerability is observably open, occasionally. They go through a series of attack, follow-up, and rest, however fast, a patient and strategizing player will learn what to look for and will be able to reliably win. Miyazaki wants you to win, you just have to be accepting of his help, as sparse as it feels. Anyways, let's wrap this up before this devolves into a defense of difficulty in video games. Just remember, my fellow and aspiring game developers, enemies need a clear way to be defeated while they're trying to stop the player. This can manifest itself in an infinite number of ways, some more fun than others, but that's where playtesting and building to your specific vision comes in. In my experience, if you can answer the question of what specific strategy should players use to defeat this enemy, and players seem to pick up on it and use that mechanic or timing, you're probably doing a decent job. Just keep up the good work, my friends. Anyways, if you'd like more discussions about specific elements of game design, please consider subscribing. If you are at all interested in platforming games like Mario, or other games with tough enemies like Elden Ring, consider checking out my own indie game, Trials of Amora. That's all for this time. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, friends.